probably about 15 to 20 knots out of the west to northwest, which is a good direction for us. Ken Niedemeyer is headed out to one of his favorite dive spots in the Florida Keys. It's right on the edge of state waters. So we're going to be three miles offshore, 3.1 miles offshore. Niedemeyer is a tropical fish dealer. He spends several days each week legally catching small fish along the reefs around Key Largo. Some people think that you can't be a commercial fisherman and be environmentally friendly, but that's not true at all. But today, he's here for a different reason. In fact, right under the boat just about is where one of them is. Beneath the boat is a coral nursery, which he started and nurtures, in hopes of restoring the Keys' once glorious but now tattered corals. My experience in the water, you know, 30 years of diving, I've seen a lot of things and I've learned a lot, and now I'm, I feel like I'm getting an opportunity to use that knowledge to make a difference in restoring the reefs in the Keys anyway. So we're going to put the anchor right here. You might call this spot his laboratory. But Mr. Niedemeyer has no PhD and no advanced training as a scientist, though he studied marine biology in college. What he does have is a passion to give something back to the marine environment where he has made a living for 30 years. The genesis of the coral nursery was my live rock farm, which was a plot of ocean bottom that I have a permission to put rocks on the bottom and let them grow. And I also have permission to harvest any corals that land on those rocks, as long as they stay attached to the rock. This is some fire coral that started to grow on the rock. In 1996, Ken realized that species of coral that had been in decline for years were growing on his rocks. And as it grew and started branching, I realized this is staghorn coral. And you know, I was excited. And I found five, maybe even six colonies that year, 1996, 1997, somewhere in there. He set aside these rocks and let the coral grow. Corals can reproduce both sexually and through asexual fragmentation. Bits that fall or are cut off can grow on their own. So Ken and his daughter Kelly began to cut off pieces and attach them to other rocks. But as these corals started growing, we, we started feeling a little bit like, oh, I don't know that we really want to sell these. You know, it, So we decided, I guess our little buzz thing is, rather than make money at it, we decided to make a difference. And that difference was we're going to use these for restoration. I am Megan Johnson, and I'm the Marine Program Coordinator for the Nature Conservancy. Eventually, the Nature Conservancy noticed Ken's project. The Conservancy began to provide some financial assistance and the expertise of people like Megan Johnson, who now works with Ken to cut, plant, and study staghorn coral. You know, they're a very important coral. Those and the, the elkhorn coral, which is a similar species, they're the fastest growing corals. They, they make new structure the fastest. And they're, if, if we're going to do any kind of restoration work, that's the ones we should focus on because they are a very key part of the whole reef ecosystem. I have a vision of what I want to do with the corals, but we have to get the permission to do it. And that's the challenging part right now is for people to decide to allow us to put these corals on the places where they used to grow. Corals are in danger around the globe, not just here in the Florida Keys, from global warming and other environmental disruptions, like pollution, boat damage, and overfishing. Here in the Keys, there is another big problem, the disappearance of sea urchins, who keep undesirable algae growth under control. They were a major grazer, and they grazed the algae down, and they pretty much completely died off in the Caribbean, which had an impact on the ability of these corals to reproduce because when a fragment of the coral falls off, when it falls on the bottom, it falls into a sea of algae and so they don't have anything to attach to. There's no firm surface for them to attach to and so they die or they get overgrown by algae. Since the 1990s, the staghorn and elkhorn corals in Florida have declined so dramatically that they were listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Ready? Here we go. And so, several days a week, Ken visits his coral nursery. In the beginning, he grew corals on rocks. Now he uses small concrete stands that he builds himself. He uses a special epoxy to affix the corals to the stands. Each top is numbered so they can keep track of how the coral grows, to identify which strains are the most robust and how different conditions affect coral development. It's a difficult place to, to grow coral, but at the same time, the coral that does grow there and survives there is ready to go out in the wild, because it is in the wild. It's not a tank-raised thing that's never been exposed to the, the hazards of ocean life. It's, 
it's ready to go. So the corals that we're producing are reef competent animals and that's an important thing. Many of the corals have been in place only a few months, but others have been doing well for a year or more. It's a good time of the year for them. The water's just the right temperature. Another couple of months, it'll be, they'll be going, <laughs> you know, it's hot. <laughs> Some corals are even thriving. Just a few miles away is Molasses Reef, a well-known dive spot where Ken planted coral several years ago. Our thought, and it's, it's getting there, is that in a few years that module will be a complete thicket of this coral growing all over it. You know, it's starting to happen and there's a lot of fish on it. It's a good demonstration. You know, anybody doing any kind of coral restoration work, that's one of the poster child restoration sites. And Some experts say corals face such vast problems that efforts like this one will have little or no effect. But don't tell that to Ken Niedemeyer. Everybody has a calling in their lives as to whether they take that calling and go with it. Everybody can make a difference. And we're not PhD scientists, we're not anybody special, but we've chosen to try to make a difference and, you know, I think we are.